uh, of a trade that was uh, possibly going to go down, and today it is official that it is going down with Vegas beefing up. They're getting Alex Mar or Alec Martinez from L.A., so L.A. is clearly in sell mode at this point. They've uh, made another deal. Now uh, going to uh, Vegas is Martinez. What more can you add about that whole thing? Will? Yeah, pretty straightforward. Two second-round picks the Vegas Golden Knights gave up for Alec Martinez, and th this is a, a good deal for Vegas because... Um, Martinez has another year left on his contract after this year. So it's not just the pure rental. And so Kelly McCrimmon in Vegas knows that they've needed help on the blue line, that uh, they, they've they been a little shy in that area this year, and there's been a lot of inconsistency. So Martinez should help. He's, he's a champion. He's won a cup, um, more than one, and, uh, and knows what that drive is all about. So they get him for this run in the playoffs and all of next season as well. And from the Kings' perspective, it's just continuing down the path. Rob Blake's doing a pretty good job here of retooling. I was just looking on my way in. Somebody chronicled everything that Blake has gotten for Jack Campbell and um, Kyle, Clifford. Kyle Clifford and uh, Martinez and Toffoli. And, you know, it's a, a nice package of younger players, Tyler Madden, who's a prospect, Trevor Moore, who's in their lineup now, and then like a whole whack of second and third round picks. Um, and that, you know, that's how you accelerate a rebuild, to, to have 10, 12 picks in one draft. And, you know, that's how you replenish the cupboard. And they've already got some good young players in Ontario they are going to call up now and get spots on the roster that were previously given to guys like Clifford and Toffoli and Martinez. So what do you think of Vegas, their end of it now? How, how complete are they, mm -hmm. Keith? Well, we just watched them. Mike and I watched them beat the Capitals the other day, and we the one thing you asked us after the game, what, what do they need? And mm. we set a defenseman, and Martinez is a perfect fit. I mean, this is a team that's built to win the Stanley Cup this year. They were built to win it last year and lost out to San Jose in that difficult uh, way in Game 7. They are a very good team with a really good head coach in Peter DeBoer, and now they have a piece that DeBoer is very familiar with from his time in San Jose playing against the Kings, and Martinez is very familiar with the Las Vegas, or with the Vegas lineup as well. So I think he fits in seamlessly, and I think it's an important piece that they needed to address defensively. They haven't been as good as they can be, and I think Martinez will help them in that regard. Where's Dallas in all this mess? Yeah, you know what? It's funny because, you know, they're obviously a team. You look at the stand, everybody talks about St. Louis, and rightfully so, but Dallas is right there, and they've got a game in hand. Um, so that, that division, by the way, St. Louis, Dallas, and Colorado, there's three heavyweights. And to think that, you know, that, it was last year everybody kind of looked at the Atlantic and saw Boston, Tampa Bay, yeah. Boston, and Toronto, and obviously Boston emerged from that. The, the power alley in the West this year seems to go right through that central division. And so I'll be curious to see what, uh, what Dallas does. Dallas is a weird team to me because they've, um, you know, they're doing so well. And yet at any given time, I mean, Taylor, Tyler Sagan went like two months without a goal. Yep. You know, Jamie Benn wasn't playing well for, for quite some time. You, you went down the list of things that are wrong with Dallas and then you look at the standings and they go, nothing wrong with them. It's kind of the same list that was wrong with St. Louis last year, yeah. right? Like Tarasenko mm -hmm. wasn't scoring at the same yeah. rate, and all of a sudden they started scoring at the right time. And Dallas is the one team that, uh, talking to some of the coaches in the Western Conference, that every team fears. They're the one team that nobody wants to play. And they're starting to kind of rise to the top right now. And they are deep at But nobody's position. watching them. Nobody's no, got their perfect, eyeballs right? on it. It's just like Washington a couple of years ago when they finally had lowered expectations and they managed to win a Stanley yeah, Cup. It's, it's funny how that works. You always think, you know, San Jose used to be like that. Oh, San Jose's the team to beat. San Jose's coming. San Jose, then you forget about them. And then the, the year everybody forgot about them, they got to the Cup Final and almost beat Pittsburgh. So, so you look at the Central, you, do, you got the Blues, you got the Stars you just mentioned. And then you have the Avalanche, perhaps the, the most talented team in the division when they're all healthy. But right now you got Grubauer who was out, Rantanen who might be out for eight plus weeks Whoops, at this point. That was my phone. It's, it's, is it ringing? It's, it's so hot. It just vibrating. Vibrate. Is there a text on there? <laughs> it's on. I don't have it on vibrate. I've got it on explode. That's the most. You have to protect that thing hey, with all your. Talking life. about Colorado. Yes. I was just clumsy. I knocked okay. it over. Okay. No. No we're, text. We're spitballing on the air the okay. other day about Colorado. Grubauer goes down. Do you think there'd be any chance Lundqvist would say yes to a trade? I mean, the three-goalie system, I don't care how they paint it with roses, it's not going to be any, it's no good. So and let, and let, it's no good for them to give away a young goaltender that has potential, 
yep. Georgiev, yep. and another guy, Shea Storkin, who's supposedly going to be their guy, but, you know, if he yep. falters, you never know with those goalies. Could it possibly be in the realm of... I, I would severely doubt that we're going to see that by Monday. Um, let's look at this for a number of ways. Okay, Colorado's interesting, and, and you're right. Some people wonder, would they go out and get, like, a really big-time goaltender like Lundqvist? Here's the thing. Lundqvist hasn't played since, what, Jay, played a couple Early of games. Early February. January. He's only played two games since January the 11th. Um, you know, he's got a full no-move clause. He's not going anywhere unless he wants to go somewhere. But it's pretty obvious that the Rangers' preferred solution to the three-headed monster is push this off to the summer and and either buy out Henrik Lundqvist or Henrik Lundqvist comes to the Rangers and say, uh, I will move to go to the right team for my final year. Um, Why not take two kicks at the can? Well, yeah, but... And, I'm not saying it's out of the question, I guess, but I don't think I don't think Lundqvist, Lundqvist could, I guess, but at this point, not anticipating it. And th this whole thing, it's really fascinating to me the way this Lundqvist thing's playing out because he's always had legacy status with the New York Rangers, and yet now the reality is he's the number three guy. And, you know... He can't be very happy. He's got to be frustrated with the way it's going. Yeah, so proud, so so, so established, Hall of Famer. So you know, it, it, and there was a there were rumors, and let me stress rumors, a few weeks ago about the whole, what if Lundqvist went and, and that'd be a good fit for Colorado. And at the time, you could rationalize it that way. So here's another one. So Mark Bergevin, the general manager of the Montreal Canadiens, he's in. He was in Colorado the other night. I think it was a Monday night game. Back again tonight. So everybody's going nuts trying to figure out who from the Montreal Canadiens, you know, could it be Thomas Tatar? Could it be Max Domi? Could it be um, Jeff Petrie? Could it be Jonathan Drouin? Could it be Kovalchuk? Although Kovalchuk wouldn't fetch a roster player from Colorado. You, you don't need to spend two nights in Colorado watching the Avs to make a Kovalchuk rental deal at the deadline. Um, and then people are saying, what about Carey Price? Say so to your point, different situation because Lundqvist has one year left at eight and change, and Carey Price is just starting his $10 million plus deal for many years to come. How many years? Six, uh, seven? I forget exactly what it is, but it's a lot. Mm. So, anyways, um, Price also has a full no move clause. And, and it started everybody kind of dreaming in Technicolor about what these types of deals might look like. And Carey Price has the full no move. Um, I'm curious once the season's over. I don't expect anything to happen with any of these big goalies by Monday. But once the season is over, I'll be really curious to see where Carey Price's mindset is at, publicly and privately, where Shea Weber's mindset. Montreal Canadiens are going to miss the playoffs this year, probably. It'd be the fourth time in five years they've missed the playoffs. It's not probable anymore. It's yeah, so very exactly. likely. I exactly. Mean. And and are these guys getting any younger? No, they're no. not. Mm. So so are they if are they if they're content being the mentors and the stabilizers on a rebuild in Montreal, because that's basically what it is. And they're gonna continue to push more kids up through the system. The Russian defenseman Alexander Romanov should be there next year. He's a good one. And that if, are they content to do that? And if they are, that's fine. But nothing happens unless these guys say it needs to happen, and I'd be really curious to see what their mindset is at. And what makes the Avalanche the intriguing team to talk about is they have a lot of cap space. Yes. So they can go out and do this. And yeah, although they feel like it's, it's fleeting. Yeah, well, the window will close. Because Kale McCarr is going right. to need a deal, Gerard will need a deal, and... And, uh, you know, they just signed, uh, got the rant and extension done. So there's going to be a lot of young guys coming through their system that are going to su suck up that cap. So the, is, the this one, al is this almost with the injuries, though? A, a that's lost part of second it. half of the year then? It's I mean, also, what, what, it's, what can it's they also do? a visual look from Joe Sackick, who won multiple Stanley Cups with the Avalanche, yep. and they were a busy team yep. at the trade deadline. Yeah, no doubt. Ray Bork, Rob Blake. I mean, they went out and made big deals. Yeah, and I, I don't, I don't doubt that they they were in on Blake Coleman. From my understanding, in fact, there were initial reports that's where Coleman was going, was to Colorado.